And here we go. We are live. But we're going to have to do it from this script right here because the auto script thing is not on. So hello, everybody. I'm your doc, Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. And we got a whole lot in store for you. You're watching Open. It's that live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. So stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guest is a Bronx filmmaker and the founder of Green Canvas Productions. He joins us to speak about the, the release of his 1.5 million documentary and to highlight the importance of the doc for the future of our borough. So please welcome to the show. He's been here before, no stranger to the show, Greg Hernandez. We're in the house. Here he is. Greg, welcome. Nice to see you. Likewise, thank you in for having person. me. In person. Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. This time in person, instead yeah, of virtual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us, you've been through so much with this documentary. Give me that feel for how you first got it up and running. Uh, uh, it's a five-year journey. Uh -huh. uh, this is a feature documentary. We thought it would be a short. Now we got it done last year. We premiered at the AMC Cinema in uh -huh. Bay Plaza. Now we're in some festivals. We're trying to ultimately distribute the movie. Uh -huh. That's good. How does that feel for you? I mean, this is not your first one, is it? My first feature, yeah, but not my first film. Yeah. But this feels amazing to have accomplished this, set out a vision and a goal, get it done, and you get to see the vision uh -huh. on the big screen, and people get to see it. It resonates with them. That's what you want. A quick synopsis of what it's all about. Yeah, so it's basically a time capsule story. You get to see what happened in the Bronx when it lost its last bookstore ah, in 2016. And yeah. what did the people in the Bronx do about it? So it's about resilience. It's about family, intergenerational relationships, our culture here, mm -hmm. and the need to increase literacy, access to books in the borough. Yeah. When did you think uh, or feel there was a need for that? Well, I felt there was a need for it in 2014. You know, when I heard the Barnes & Noble was going to close. Yeah. Trying to find a book. Was that the one in Co-op City? Co-op City. Big yeah. Plaza. I, I did something there. We did a book signing with uh, Steve Harvey. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I that's I think that was one of the last big book signings. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, Thinking yeah. back. Wow. Ooh. Isn't that the power of a bookstore? Like yeah. some people say it's a novelty, but yeah. there's still many in the other boroughs. We had zero. Right, right. Right out of Co-op City. So then you found out that there was a need from there. Then what did you do with that? Well, I did actually find out it was closing uh, when I started to hear about Noel Santos, who was going to start a crowdfunding campaign to bring an independent bookstore. Yeah. And I resolved to meet her. She was having pop-up events. Mm. And then I was hooked. I started, this is 2017. And then a year later, I was shooting more and more. And then a few years later, we got the movie done. And who were some of the people that you interviewed or some of the people that you came in contact with? Oh, Who's in the dock? We interviewed a plethora of people from uh, our borough pre former borough president, Ruben uh, Diaz Jr., to Noel, Noel Santos, obviously. Uh, we also interviewed uh, Cerecia Fennell, who just had, I believe, the sixth annual uh, Bronx Book Festival. Mm -hmm. We interviewed many people in the Bronx, as well as even in Manhattan. Dr. Susan Newman at NYU yeah. and the CEO of Literacy Partners, Anthony Tassi. And what's some of the things that they had to say well, about maybe redoing a bookstore, opening up a new one, or keeping something going so that uh, we can enhance literacy in our, in our borough. Well, the, the great thing about this film is that the tip of the iceberg is a bookstore. And there are many ways for people in the Bronx to get involved. So this provides a clear, mm -hmm. concrete call to action. Book clubs, book fairs, festivals, starting your own little free library in, in your home, in your neighborhood, in your park, in your building. There are many things we can do. The lack of school libraries and classroom libraries. Yeah. The fact that you can have after-school programming where students can pick their own books and start a book club. There are many ways that any of us can get involved. It doesn't just have to be a bookstore. It can be a literacy, literary space for community, a third space. And that's more of what we need. And that's yeah. what I highlighted in the document. Yeah. And sometimes you, if you don't have it anywhere else, you got to do it in your home. Yeah. And that's the point of this film, to galvanize people and show them you can do it too. You mm -hmm. don't have to raise that capital. You can do something. I believe a little free library costs three hundred dollars, maybe three fifty, to install and do everything. And after that, you can become a steward, somebody yeah. in your neighborhood. And the great thing is that when we started this documentary, 2017, 2018, there were only two little free libraries in the borough. Now there's close to thirty. There was no, there were no bookstores. Now we have one, but then we have pop-ups and mobile bookstores. So we started this documentary during the right time, during a renaissance. Yeah. And now we've seen the fruits of it. In terms of success, we're in some festivals, but hopefully we can have more community screenings coming up 
And that way we can ultimately get it onto a streaming platform. Yeah. You feel it has come to fruition, all the hard work and dedication that you put into it? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's still more. Of course, there's always still, still more. Still more because what happens when you, for filmmakers, here's some great, great advice. You need to save your energy and your money because even when you finish your movie, you're, there's still more to do. Yeah. Just distribution, building your community, especially if this is a social uh -huh. impact documentary, there needs to be that impact where people see it and it has a ripple effect. So getting your elected officials involved, having free community screenings in libraries, bookstores, yeah. community centers, spaces, and parks. That's what needs to be done. Any live testimonials? People come back and say, hey, you know, yeah, I like yeah, what yeah. you did. Uh, so we've had some Q and A's and people are saying, wow, you really showed the borough. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I felt a certain way. I feel inspired. Uh, we've had now a couple of students who say, I'm going to write, or they've done projects on the documentary. So it's just very important. It's awareness, but then action. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your production company, uh, Green Acres, uh, Green Canvas Productions. Uh, it's been called Green Acres before. So that's totally fine. It, it has been? Yeah, yeah. By, no, by, no uh, really? Yeah, by somebody. That just like, came out. No, no, no. It's totally fine. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is a novelty too. Uh, Green Canvas Productions is a video production company based in the Bronx. We're also an MBE yeah. certified company, so we can work with uh, agencies in the city. And we provide commercials and videos, explainer videos. We basically yeah. provide clients with solutions through video because yeah. every story can be highlighted and enhanced through video. Because the ultimate thing when you're having a business or a nonprofit, you want to communicate to your target audience, the operative word is trust. And a video can help sell that. It can help sell a pitch. It can help you get funding, marketing, recruiting, any campaign you're trying to do. Video needs to be a key component of that. And that's where we come in. We become an arm of your company, another extension oh, of you, yeah. and help you. We don't just, we're not just video producers and professionals. We understand, hey, here's what's going to work in terms of communicating to your target audience and getting that really, that significant ROI. So that's what we do. Been in business for four years. Started right before the pandemic. Yeah. Still going. Very happy. And we're slowly scaling up. Good. Who comes to you? Companies, corporations? Who comes to you? Uh, nonprofit organizations to help them put together a video? Who are some of the people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've, we've worked with a few nonprofits here recently in the Bronx. I know uh, the Oyate Group. We're working with Green Bronx Machine. So we work mm -hmm. with you know organizations, companies, corporate clients, you name it. As long as we align and, and respect and like their mission, we choose who we work with, yeah. that we'll work with you. Um, that's what we do. Good idea. Film festivals. Are you in some of them? You're looking to put the documentary into them or yes. which ones? Oh, totally. Yeah. We uh, premiered at the Inwood Film Festival and we won uh, Best Award or Excellence in Film for Documentary. Thank you. And we won an honorable or received an honorable mention at the Harlem People's Film Festival. All right. And now up next is a Manhattan Film Festival on June 21st. So you have an award winning company. First one. Yeah. There you go. Very happy. Oh, everybody back here. Give them a big round of applause. Look, they can hear you. Look. Thank you. <laughs> we got all the people working in our studio today. Thank you guys for all the work that you do. You may want to talk to them afterwards to see if you can get with them. I don't know. It's all about networking. That's right. So what's next? What's next is seeing if we can get this movie onto potentially a streaming platform. Uh, obviously, PBS comes to mind. Ah. But then also it's having those community screenings, getting the word out mm. on the ground in a hyper-local way uh, to make sure people are aware of this. And we want to inspire more people to increase literacy in their communities. Because the great thing about this film is the people who are featured in it, five years later, they're still doing the tremendous amount of work and they've seen traction. So it's one of those things where if you live in the Bronx and you watch this documentary, yeah. not only can you be inspired, but you can connect with the people in this documentary who are maybe in your neighborhood, in your zip code. And some of those people again are? Uh, we have Noel Santos, Cerecia Fennell, Ron Cavanaugh, Rebecca Schoff, uh, Latanya Devoe. Uh, we have also, I believe, Brandon Montez, Anthony Tucker, and so on and so forth. Did you reach out to any companies or any organizations for funding? Yeah, that's the difficult thing. When you're making your first feature film, no matter how good of an idea it is, it's like, well, I don't know if we want to fund you. You've never done this before. Right. So a lot of this was out of pocket. But I was able to bring on a friend of mine to become the executive producer, Nigel Castro, also from the Bronx. Shout out. And he provided us with about $15,000. Oh, so we do were you still need it. money? We still need money to okay. distribute the movie. Sincerely, look into this camera right here and just ask for what you want. You never know. My name is Gregory Hernandez. I'm a filmmaker from the Bronx, and my feature-length documentary is still in need of financial support. 
we do have a fiscal sponsor with Fractured Atlas, so you can make a tax-deductible donation. You can do so right now by going to 1.5million.com. Any amount helps us, and this will help us get the film potentially on PBS. All right, did you reach out to PBS yet? Well, that's the thing. It takes a long time, so we are in contact. We also do have a sales agency, a distributor right. on board with us, and we're working with a post-production company to essentially enhance the movie so yep. that way it can pass quality control. So it's a whole process to try and get it. It's like, oh, when is your film done? Yeah, it's been done, but now we have to. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to speak to somebody to get the film over uh, over the hump, so to speak, what would you tell them? Because they listen to us, you know. I would tell them essentially, this is a movie from the heart. It's a 90 minute story that showcases uh, inspiration, community engagement, as well as resilience. And it's a movie that can really inspire, but also it's so broad that everyone can watch it and say, I align with that. I resonate with that. That resonates with me. I understand that. Because that's, um, in this country, mm. that's like the American way, so to speak. Yeah. But it's, it's so important uh, because books are important. I believe there was a study uh, from the Urban Center uh, of Education, I believe, or maybe culture, I think that's what they're called. They had a report last year that almost 700,000 New Yorkers of working age only have some college. So you, this is an economic yeah. uh, uh, importance and also health importance. If you read more, you live longer. If you read more, you can get a higher paying job and finish college. So it's very important that we uh, get people reading more, whether it's technology or books, whatever is convenient for you. So that's why I would tell PBS, this is a, it's a mandate. It's very important. Social impact documentary uh, made on a shoestring budget. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you for all you do. Pleasure. All right, listen. Uh, give it us that web that website one more time. Yes, yes. It's uh, one point five million dot com, and you can follow us on social media at one point five million underscore documentary. There you go, Bronx filmmaker and director. One point five million documentary, Gregory Hernandez. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. We'll take a quick break. I've got more coming up next on Open.